Greetings, blessings. I'm just a frog on a log, an armadillo on a pillow, a koala bear on a leather chair. You know, I'm, it's all humility. Uh, I could be wrong. Anything I say, if I say something offensive, I apologize in advance. Just know that we're all equal on a spiritual realm. That was comedian and radio personality Larry Dorsey Jr. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. In this podcast, Larry, who was born and raised in San Francisco, talks about his parents who came to the city from the South and South America, respectively. Larry grew up in the Excelsior, where he still lives today. He tells us about the different schools he went to and shares experiences from throughout his childhood. Find Larry on social media at Larry Dorsey Jr. He also wants you to know that he believes in Native American land back and sovereignty and acknowledges, as we do, that San Francisco sits on Ohlone land. Check back Thursday for part two and the continuation of Larry Dorsey Jr.'s story. Here's Larry. Both of my parents, my dad as well, are from South America. My dad is from Texas, Louisiana area. (laughs) And my mom is from the actual continent or subcontinent or uh, she's from Colombia. Narcos, season three, what's cracking? Yeah. Shakira. (laughs) Um, Can I ask where in Texas your dad's from? Because I'm from Texas as well. Oh, wow. He's from the borderline, like East Texas, like right next to Shreveport is the closest city. But oh, he's yeah. like he's from Tatum and like Longview and that yeah, area. Yeah, I know that. Tyler. I, yeah, I'm from Fort Worth originally. It's oh, okay. just down. Yeah, like just four forward. hour, yeah. two hour drive, something like that. Yeah, cool. Um, my dad played in the NFL. He senior, came, Lord yes, Dorsey Mason, Senior. Yes. Okay. And he was he comes from extreme poverty. Like he like was almost a slave. Oh shit. I don't really know like my grandparents' story. Mm-hmm. I know my grandpa like escaped from a plantation or something like that. But my dad, he picked cotton and all that. Like he experienced the he's born in the fifties. Like he experienced some stuff. Yeah. And he made it out of that to play professional ba- uh, football and get his master's degree and all that. Wow. But he came to the Bay Area because of several things a woman just the hippie black panther kind of history like he just the bay area was his next stop at the time he had, had no more money left you know 90 uh, percent uh, of athletes who play professional football especially if they're or any sport especially if they're of african descent they end up broke mm. so his same case for him then he came to the bay it's like my, a 70s 80s yeah he or, played in, he played in the 70s so he did he come here in the 80s or he what? came here in the 80s You've got the voice that can overdo, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> okay, sorry, so your dad came here in the 80s? Yep, and my mom did as well. Okay, do you know about, about what year, or? It's okay. Nah, I don't. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but he came here after his NFL career. Yes. Saying. Okay, okay. And he only played one year in NFL, and then he played uh, four years, I think, in Canada. Okay. Yeah. Did he come here for that woman you said or or yeah okay like she was the one who said i gotta play for you to stay but then like the history of the bay and the culture added to his move of course and because somebody i won't get too much into it was trying to kill him oh shit not on some it was just like some random it's a long story uh just know i have a bit i come my family is some real gangsters okay (laughs) right um and my mom came here because she had political problems she was a lawyer in Colombia. And this was like when Pablo Escobar and that kind of stuff started really popping off. Mm-hmm. And she had to leave the country because some stuff happened. Do so you bo- know why why it was that she came to San Francisco specifically? She knew someone as well. Okay. She, uh, uh, a man. But they broke up like right when she got here. Right. And so she didn't know English and she didn't oh, know sure. anybody else. Yeah. So she was kind of like alone. You know, okay. She was by herself. Do you know which parts of the city they, they were staying in? They or? both went to Oakland. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't okay. come to San Francisco. They both went to Oakland. The town, actually. Yeah, the town, the O. And um, they came to San Francisco because they were going to college at San Francisco State University, and that's where they met. They both went to SF State? Yeah. Fuck. And that's where this, I graduated from, Me too. too. <laughs> this, this podcast is very SF State-centric. <laughs> Bunch of gators all over the place. Yep, yep. My brother got his uh, bachelor's from there as well, so... Nice. 
Yeah, we're, and I went to preschool at SF State. Oh, shit. Yeah, they have nice. a preschool in the back, right? So, I think I knew that because I had a, a friend who was doing uh, education, yeah. whatever it's called, like teaching, yeah. you know, becoming a teacher or whatever. So I, I was at SF State as a three, four-year-old. Nice. <laughs> and, I was, and so my story, I was born on Geary at Kaiser. And then... Um, Geary and DeViz over there? Yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I just... I was originally we were in Park Merced for like a, my like up to like seven or something. Okay. And then we came here to this house ever since. Okay. Um, and so then just real quick going back to the the class that your mom and dad met. Do you know what class it was? No, I think That'd be a joke. I think it was like a protest or something. To oh, be real. Was, not a or, class or something like that. It was there something like like an event. You know, Chances are good there was a protest at SFC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, just, like <laughs> pick a calendar day. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, there's a protest. <laughs> right yeah, on. my dad was um, mastering in Native American studies, like right when ethnic studies started, right, like around that time. Okay. And because uh, you know, SFC was like the first place to have ethnic studies. Yes, it was after a strike. Yeah. After a student strike. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And my mom is indigenous, right? She's Latina culturally, but indigenous uh, ancestrally. And so I think my dad had a thing for that, you know, and, you know, my dad's black. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's how I came to be. Okay. Um, and you said you were born in 990. 90. 90. Yeah. Uh, what time of year, if I can ask? October. I could do the math. Yeah, no, you, you weren't in your mom's womb. Because well, well, yeah. it was like a year before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'll, but shortly after the earthquake, they're like, yeah. "Let's have a kid." I was con no, I was conceived in '89 though, because I was I was supposed to be born in August, I think. Yeah. Or in, in September. It was like the longest you can hold a baby past uh, the due date. My mom did that. And they're like, uh, "The earthquake's over. We made it. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah. have a kid." <laughs> <laughs> Are you the oldest of their kids? Yeah, I just have one sibling. Okay, and so you came, and you're, you're and they're like, junior, boom. My dad was like that. And oh, then, and then my mom was like, I get the second one, so she named my brother. Nice. Yeah. Did you get did your mom get your middle name or anything? No, my dad got just everything. Just get the whole yeah. thing. And, and then... my, my brother got my mom named everything on him. Nice. So yeah. So it was balanced. It was balanced. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'm gonna assume you don't remember your first couple of years on this earth. I do actually. Well, okay. Yeah. I, there I shouldn't assume. Yeah. There we go. I do. I, I actually spent a lot of time trying to re recollect and get everything back in my mind. One of the craziest things, so the apartment we were staying at, there was like a triple murder or something like that. Mm. And um, when I was young, I had a weird spiritual connection. I still kind of do, but I'm afraid of it. But I used to see orbs of light floating around. Okay, and in, in the apartment or? In the apartment, anywhere okay. I went actually. Okay. But, and I thought it was normal until my mom saw it with me. So you can oh, ask her, she will, she will attest, and, like she, I could bring a witness to the stand, like I'm not crazy. Okay. And so, one day, an orb of light came into the room, and I was with my mom, and I, I was like, Mom, like, I, like, I'm trying to learn things. I'm like, what's this? I always see these things everywhere. What are these? Mm -hmm. And I just remember, because, you know, sensory recollection, like, if something really emotional, like, high-level intensity happens to you, you can, you can remember, Absolutely, right? Or you yeah. hear a song, it brings you back to a time. Right. So I can remember that so clearly and vividly because of how strongly my mom reacted to it. Mm. She went nuts. She was like, ah, nah, nah. oh my God, praying. She doesn't, she's not even that religious. She was praying to everything. She was screaming. Because it wasn't normal for her. For you, normal. it was kind of normal. Exactly. But you're like, but what mom, what is and this? And then right at that moment is when I realized, oh shit, is this not normal? Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it started tripping me out. So my whole life I've had weird paranormal experiences I couldn't explain. Mm. And it trips me out sometimes. And people who are with me, sometimes they'll experience with me and they'll be freaked out like, what just happened? You know, and I'm like, like I don't know, dude. Like people who haven't had those experiences exactly. before. Okay. Well, shit, we should hang out. I've been, oh, I've been wondering about that. Meet those. me here at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like you go back on the recording and you hear different whispers and stuff right, that we right. were. <laughs> Other voices. I hope so. No, that's crazy, but so you were like, less than three years old when this was happening i was around three or four okay yeah. my first first memory is when i was i think six months old um and this could be fabricated but i remember because when i was born my mom took me to columbia for six months okay and i remember being in the airport wow because it was such a weird experience for yeah. me as a baby so i've always had that dream always happen and it was like blurry and kind of weird 
So I don't know if it was really the airport, but that's the earliest memory I have is having a weird feeling walking down a hallway. Okay. And I believe it was the airport when my mom took me to Columbia or back from Columbia, one or the other. Right. Was it something more than just like being surrounded by Spanish speaking folks? It, or could, it, it could have been that. I don't know. It was vague. You're it, was ba- it was, it like was super impression. vague. But I wow. remember that feeling. Okay. And then I remember the orb of light feeling. I remember getting in a, a lot of fights in um, preschool at SF State Preschool. Okay. I remember the first time, this is kind of racy, uh, uh, the, a girl in preschool showed me her vagina. Okay. And me and my brother were like, where's your pee-pee? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I ain't got one. And it was crazy. Like, And she was just like, and we're, we're, we showed her our, our like, what, you ain't got pee-pee? Well, you know? I was going to ask, was it a show me yours, I'll show you mine? Yeah, kind Okay, of. okay. I thought it was maybe just a, I'll no, show you mine. No, like, no. That it, has to be a It was at it. first. She okay. was just like, boom, right? And me and my brother were like, kind of looking at each other like, yeah. what, where's your? And, yeah. she, and she was like, I don't got one. What, what do you got? And I, we were like, we got this. Like, so I remember that. I've never said that before either. I love it. I love <laughs> so it. this is exclusive to Yo Podcast. Um, I and also, thank you, no, but thank you for calling it a vagina because she's like what three or four. Yeah. <laughs> you can cuss on this podcast. Yeah, cr- thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, and I, I remember we were always, I was always in trouble. Like, mm. always. I was the kid who was put in the back of class. I had to face the wall. Like, so I remember in preschool, um, <laughs> there was this woman with a fake arm. Okay. And my brother called her a bitch oh, and said, no. your arm's fake. And oh. he was like four years old. Right? And we got in so much trouble. Trouble. Why we did you get in trouble for that? Because I'm his You're older brother. Egging him on. I always my, just for my dad old. would be all like, "You might as well come get some too." Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't get ideas, and I'm like, ah. Um, uh, yeah, I remember getting pour, hot sauce poured down our mouth and Ooh. then blocking off the sinks, and we were. Ah! <laughs> I remember getting our mouths washed out with soap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Was I it just mostly, remember getting in a lot of trouble. Mostly at school that you get in trouble, or did you get in trouble at home as well? At home, we got in trouble, but my dad was always working. And my mom was a, a full-time student, an intern, doing a lot of things. So we were raised by, like, the neighborhood kids right. who were, like, teenagers. Right. So they, like, <laughs> we went to parties. We were, like, little kids. Like, we got to exp- we got to grow up fast. This is good. <laughs> this is this is my mom's favorite childhood memory of my brother and I. When we were in preschool, my brother was like probably not like couldn't talk. He was like one or something. He was crying in the other room, and I knew that it was him crying, and I was banging on the door like, "Let me in! Let me in!" And the people were like, why do you want to go in? I was like, I need to see my brother. Like, I was a kid too, right? I'm only a year and a half older than him. And they were like, okay, you go in. And when I went up to my brother and grabbed him, he stopped crying. Mm-hmm. And so they told my mom, and it's like a chill name. Oh, my God, I'll never forget. A little baby whisper. Yeah, the baby whisper. Like, and the connection between me and my brother. We're like twins. Like, Yeah, one like, and a half years, that's that's close. We're, we're like best friends and everything like that. To this day? To this day, yeah. Nice. To this day. Um, then I went to Lakeshore Elementary. Which is right next to SF State. Okay. You know, if you go down the way. Lake Merced is the lake of the lake shore. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Um, I went to Lake Shore. It was very hippie. Okay. Um, so, like, I grew up very, not just because I'm from San Francisco, because I think that's a cop-out where people say, I'm from San Francisco, I don't see color, I don't see gender. Da, da, da. Right. Like, I think that's a cop-out. But I was actually, I feel like, by my parents, but also by the school I went to, like, elementary. Mm. I was raised to, like, no matter if you're what, it like, I never, ever in my life thought of anybody but a human mm. until I got to high school where then I realized, oh, shit, I'm black. You know right, what I mean? Right. But before that, I didn't have that any type of even even like, you know, like, you know how they try to say, like, there's a gay agenda. 
I'm like, I'm from San Francisco. If there's a gay agenda, I would be gay, right? <laughs> there's not, I don't believe in the gay agenda, you know right. what I mean? Like, it's, I knew, I had gay classmates in first and second grade. Like, right I knew they were gay. And I remember I, I beat this gay dude's ass in elementary because he slapped my brother. And all the teachers, all the teachers were trying to see if I did it because he was gay. And, and and in my mind, I was like, all no, like, no, I don't even know what that is. Right, you know what I mean? Right. I was just like, no, nah, he hit my brother. I beat, I beat his ass. Yeah. And then when they realized it wasn't like a hate crime or whatever, they were like, oh, okay. Like, you know, they weren't <laughs> tripping. You just beat him up. Like, it's okay. And they let me go. But <laughs> but I but I, I went to, so after that, I went to a very hood, like ghetto middle school. Like, people had guns, selling drugs, like gang banging already, sex. Here in the city? Here or? in the city, yeah. Do you want to say which one? Yeah, Aptus Middle School. It's, okay. it's, gentrification changed the dynamics of it. Yeah. But um, I remember my very first day, I went to a bathroom, and there was an eighth grader, and you could cuss, right? Oh, yeah. Getting his dick sucked by a sixth grader. Okay. And I walked into the bathroom, and I was just like, right? And in my mind, I was like, how did he get that to happen on the first day? Like, what did he say? <laughs> and then I was just like, and then he looked at me like, what the fuck you looking at? And I was like, oh, sorry. Right? And I'm coming from a hippie elementary school. I got sandals on. I got a tie-dye shirt. I'm like happy-go-lucky. <laughs> like, oh, peace, love, flowers. We're saying, oh, I love everybody. And I was just like, whoa, okay. And I walked down the hallway, and I see a kid putting a gun in his locker. I'm 10 years old. And he, he sees me, and I see him, and I'm like, oh, I ain't see shit, right? And I keep walking, and he comes to me, he grabs me, he throws me up against the locker. He said, what did you see? Right, he was shorter than me. Right. And I was like, I didn't see anything, I didn't see anything. And he was like, you didn't see anything? I was like, I didn't see anything. And he was like, I like you, right? And he turned out to be one of the bullies of the school, befriended me. And I got lucky, like, I was, I was never a bully. But I got lucky because I befriended for some reason in my life, I've always befriended the most gangster people. I've always befriended the bullies. And so I never had like issues because all the like the, the badasses were my friends, right. you know? And so on the flip side of that coin, I was always the person who made friends with the outcasts. Okay. Like I remember in elementary, like a lot of the kids who were sad or melancholy or I could feel like they weren't happy with their life. Mm -hmm. the, I, and this is, I, I attribute this to why I became a comedian. Hmm. I would try to make them laugh. Mm -hmm. Part of it was because I, uh, 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 I felt offended that I, because I was a class clown, everybody was mm -hmm. laughing except them. Right. Like, why is this motherfucker ain't laughing? <laughs> and you know, it's because they're sad. I don't know for what, the yeah. things at home, whatever. And so I would befriend a lot of outcasts, like in elementary. I would, I would try, and I would work hard and make them laugh, and then make them. You know, I felt like I was, I didn't know it at the time, but now in re when I look back, I was like helping them through whatever depression they were going through by trying to make them laugh. And they didn't understand it either. Like, why are you trying to be my friend and make me laugh? Right. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so, so in middle school was just like that, like, and I was, you know, I, I was a chubby kid, so I was part of like the fat crew in middle school, you know what I'm saying? And you know, people like the fat shame, but we were the funniest. Yeah. We were the, we were the, we had the best snacks, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were cool, you know what I mean? We would protect you if you were getting messed with, you know? So that was my crew in middle school. You were kind of in the, the in crowd, like what you're talking about. Well, I wasn't what, in the like, in crowd. I would say I was. I felt like I I never really related to the in crowd. I was friends with all of them. You were I, you were safe though, like the, yeah, the bullies safe. that friended you. you yeah, you I was safe. safe. Like the big because we were the fat crew. I, it was also the tall crew. Like you know, what I mean, I had the biggest dudes that were on our on our side, and some of them were bullies, some of them weren't. But like, yeah, I wasn't in the in crowd at all. Never. I was never in the in crowd. If I wanted to be, I feel like I could have been, but I never. You don't want to be. Yeah, I'm not materialistic. Right. I don't feel like I'm egotistical. Like, I don't feel, I'm not into, like, gossip and um, some of the, the, the superficial things a lot of people, like, mainstream stuff is into. I'm not really into that. Okay. So, I was more into, like, philosophical and, like, I was into aliens when I was a kid. Like, I didn't believe in God since I was a little kid. So, okay. a lot of my friends did and, like, they would always be interested in why I believed in aliens. Like, put it this way, I spent most of my lunches in the library in high school. Okay. All of them. Like, I can't, I, there was very I love few. that, but bra Brainiac a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> or just just interested, just curious, like. 
What do you think? I think the pursuit of knowledge is, is I think we live in an age of anti-intellectualism and mm. the glorification of ignorance. Okay. And so I was never for that. Okay. And both my parents, because I, part of it is probably because they're not from here, they didn't, my parents don't have friends like that. Mm. They're very lonely, solitude people. Okay. They read a lot. Like okay. we have a huge library, hundreds of books. Nice. So both of my parents are avid readers. And so that explains the high school I went to. I went to Lowell High School. Okay. So I went to like the nerd high school. Been in the news a little bit lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. (laughs) And I have a controversial opinion on a lot of that that's uh, contrary to uh, some of the beliefs, but I'm not going to go into that. (laughs) That's totally your call. But yeah, low high school is when I um, I kind of got more under. I realized my race. Okay. That's when I got con- more conscious of my race. Um, was that it, a, was that a function of the of the um, what do they call it the student body or was that like possibly part of just you that know, was get, getting older or getting both. Okay. Like I was now becoming a bigger like I grew four inches like I was becoming a black like you know how they say black kids are a lot of times looked at as adults mm. so I feel like I so here's an example I was like 14 and when it clicked in my mind because when I walk down the street like when there's traffic like parked cars I would always hear da, 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 and I would always be tripping like like what is that and one day I turned to the side I realized it was everybody I walked Locked by was there. locking their cars <laughs> and me I'm a I'm, I don't get offended or sad like I got ice water in my veins so mm. for me I took it as funny like yeah. I was just like what <laughs> <laughs> and then I like walk back and walk forward like you know I thought it was funny um and when it comes to sexuality like I grew up with gay gangsters my okay. uncle who's gay that nigga's buff as fuck okay. you know what I mean like right. so like I like for that part like I knew gay dudes who would beat your ass and rob you okay. you know what I mean so I never really like I didn't really, until I got older, realize like the plight and the revolutionary side to that too. You know okay. what I mean? So for when it comes to, but when it comes to my blackness, that hit me at a young age, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and being at Lowell, I was like the only black dude who, in most of my classes, right, right. Um, there was like I think three thousand students, and there was a. Uh, 70 black people when I was at Lowell or something like that. It was like a crazy (laughs) and a lot of them were in special ed. But we called it we called it ghetto ed. Because they weren't like, you know, do-do-do-do. They were like regular people just with anger management issues or learning disability shit like that. Um, But yeah, that was kind of like my experience at Lowell. And I started getting in a lot of trouble. Like, you name it in the movies, nothing violent or, like, sexual crimes, but cap- more based off capitalism. I started doing, you, you I, I've probably stalled over 60 cars in my life. Okay. Um, like, the amount of stories I have, people, people don't even believe me sometimes when I tell them. I'm like, yo, how do you think the movies got that idea? Right, like, they didn't make it up. Yeah, somebody did that. And yeah. I was like, I was doing that. Like, I did everything under the book. A lot of it had to do with... Um, I mean, uh, generational disenfranchisement, you know what I mean? Right Stuff on. like that, historical issues. Yep. But um, also because my father, he was a very charitable, my, to this day he's very generous. And so he allowed and permitted a lot of my friends who were from the projects and different parts of the uh, city that were really, like just, they were just downstruck and right? And they didn't, a lot of them didn't have father figures. He would allow them to live with us. Mm, so there would be awesome. a point where there would be like 12 kids living in our house. Wow. And my dad's always gone, so we had the house to ourselves. Okay. And my dad would, he, he would buy food, but the food would be gone in one day. There's 12 <laughs> 12 kids. 12 mouths, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and growing boys, like energetic oh, and, you know, so. It got to a point where we were like, we want to be fly, we're hungry, and we're like, let's find another way to make some money. Mm -hmm. And whoa, if you know, people see, people don't know, like the streets of San Francisco, like running the streets, like as a teenager in the Tenderloin, and just like really, I got to know the whole city at like 13, 14. I caught every bus, traveled the whole city, then we started stealing cars, joyriding through the city, like. (laughs) At 13? we, the first stolen car I got in, I was at 14. I was 14. When yeah. I started stealing cars, I was 15. Yeah. So I was in the car at 14. I was stealing them at 15. Okay. Statue of limitations, I'm good. Right. Um, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I haven't done a crime in like 
over 12 years. Like, I'm good. But, you, ever, um, you ever get caught? Almost. Almost. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm named after my uncle who was murdered, you know, my middle name wise. And, uh, you know, a lot of my family is dead or in jail. So there's a lot of pain that comes with it. Right. Um, I never got caught. My best friend right now has been doing, who's been in prison for the last 12 years. Mm. Um, but I never, I got arrested the first time in seventh grade. I was like 11, I think, mm -hmm. because it's a funny story. So Aptis was, like I said, was hood. We had one class, we had 17 teachers because all of them quit. <laughs> one person died. Jeez. Not because of us. They couldn't prove it was our fault. But he went home and died. No, I'm just doing the math also. <laughs> like, that's like two or three a month. Yes. God damn. Okay. And so, um, uh, at the uh, at the very end, we had a, finally had our first black teacher. Okay. And he could handle us. At the end, number 17. You, you know, he was 16. He was okay. 16. He was 16. Okay. And so, he was had a Jerry Curl, like, Ice Cube NWA. Okay. His name was Mr. Johnson. And he would sip Hennessy on a job. Yes. And That's he would walk around the room it. and he'd go, hey, if we were disruptive, he'd go, y'all little motherfuckers need to shut the hell up. And everybody would be quiet, right? Yeah. And so it got to a point where he stopped teaching us and he just had us bring in movies and we would watch movies. Yeah. And so one and day. Mr. Johnson knew how to do it, man. <laughs> That's how you teach. Yes. And so one day we're watching Next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we're kids, right? It's rated R. And the school counselor, we had on-campus police in middle mm -hmm. school, right? So the school counselor comes in and looks at the TV and goes, um, what rating is this movie? And it was like Ice Cube rolling a joint up and there's like a girl on a table dancing. And and, and uh, 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 he's like, I don't, he turns his back and he goes, I don't know, the kids brought it in, right? <laughs> and she's like, this is inappropriate for kids. And she turns it off and the whole class goes crazy. We're like, boo, it's bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Ah, you know what I mean? And she was like, I got a uh, police, blah, blah, blah. Like the police officer comes in. Okay. And I, you know, I'm a class clown, so I slam my hands on the desk. And I was like, this is preposterous, right? <laughs> to be funny, right? And I pick up a pen and I fake throw it at the cop. Okay. I didn't throw it. I just went like this, right? Uh, and the cop hit the chalkboard really uh, hard. Uh, and they, they look at me and they go, you're under arrest for assaulting an officer. Oh, and I was man. like, what? Right? I didn't really understand what happened. I was like, what? And she starts trying to move through the desk and everybody's like kicking the desk so she can't get by. She's like, stop doing that, right? And so she finally gets to me, like handcuffs me and, um, and she, as she's taking me out of class, everybody goes, free my nigga Larry. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so funny. And uh, she ended up not taking me to juvenile hall. She like took me to the car. Kind of, we had a long conversation. I, I feel like my, I persuaded her, like, please, no, I'm so sorry. I'm the class clown. I didn't really, I didn't I know. would never actually <laughs> throw it. I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I don't want to hurt anybody, like, you know? Yeah. And so she let me go. I just got suspended from school. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was the first time I got arrested. But growing up in the city, like walking around, like you would, I would have to give a different name. Like you'd have to have names already, because if you give your real name, it, even if you didn't do anything, it gets logged into the system, mm. and so you get criminalized even though you're not doing anything. So we we peep, like the older people would tell us this, so we would always get fake names, so we never got logged into the system. Um, do you remember any of the names you gave? Yeah, for sure. I would always use. Um, uh, what was that? Devin. Yes. Devin was my go-to name. <laughs> <laughs> um, junior, even though I'm a junior, right? I would say junior because that's like, you know, a nickname. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But awesome. um, so, yeah, I ended up doing a big crime. Like, we tried to do a heist, and I got into a lot of trouble. It was on the news, everything. Okay. One of my friends got beat and tasered. Shit. And I had to flee the state. Like, they didn't have enough evidence to put a warrant for my arrest. Mm -hmm. But the, I had a detective going to my parents' jobs, like, looking for me. And they just wanted to interrogate me. But I knew once they did that, I would have to say, I want my lawyer. And then I'm wrapped up. So. Is so that when you were still at Lowell? That yeah, this happened, and you okay. started started happening. Started happening. Yeah, and then I, I ended up going out of state, using my brother's name to catch a train, <laughs> and uh, I had a gra I had to do a fifth year of high school, and I graduated out of state. Okay. Yes, and then I came back, 
changed my life, deleted my social media, stopped hanging oh. out with everybody, just kind of like was off the grid. Yeah. And I just went straight to college. Okay. And like when I was like 18, 19, I, or even 20, I had two jobs, two internships, and I was just hustling. That was Larry Dorsey Jr. On the next episode of Storied San Francisco, you'll hear the rest of Larry's life story. Part two drops this Thursday. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. The show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have nearly 150 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, subscribe, rate, and review our show so that we can reach even more folks. And if you'd like to drop us an old-fashioned email, we'd love it. The address is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.